So GNOME can now run as its own OS independent of any other distro. So let's have a look. Hello YouTube, it's Dorian. Thanks for tuning in to Dot Slash. So this is GNOME. It is version 3.38 and it's running in its own OS. Now you can also try this out yourself in a virtual machine and I'll show you how, but just to have a look here, you can see this is all indeed running on metal. It's not running in a virtual machine. It's running on my production machine and it's running really well. Now everything is a little odd. If you have a look at the terminal here, there's, there's not the usual terminal. It doesn't show you a whole lot and it doesn't have any kind of package manager what else is our DNF RPM from having a look? It kind of looks like these bits and pieces of Fedora, but I'm not entirely sure about that. It could have just used some components that Fedora happens to use and a bit of this, a bit of that to put it all together, but it runs really well. It's super smooth. And what's new about it is well, a few things here. So for one, the app grid, which is long overdue, they should have done this so long ago. You can now rearrange where you want things and you could do this before but you can drop things into folders you can combine things to make new folders and then you can also rearrange those so that's a really awesome addition they should have done this a long time ago i used to use an extension to do this and it's just so much nicer to have it work out of the box now applications when you want to install is a little different like i said there's no package manager or anything anything that you install is flat pack so if you look they all come from flat hub now if you hate flat packs maybe you don't like this but i personally like flat packs this kind of reminds me of running silver blue where you had the os installed separately from applications all applications were flat pack so this is kind of similar in a way i find all the applications are up to date, of course, because they are flat packs. So you'll get things such as LibreOffice 7, for example, and you can even get Steam as a flat pack. And yes, it works. And I'll show you that in a second. But first, a couple of other things that are, you know, minor. Uh, they added a restart option to the power down menu. You used to go power off and then restart. Now I'm still not a fan. They did this in 3.36. They added the sub menu to me this just adds an extra click i don't know why they just don't have this on the menu to begin with but who knows and another thing that you might find handy if you have a laptop or a device with a fingerprint sensor you won't see it here however if you have a fingerprint sensor you can enroll your fingerprints and use that to log in and unlock your system other options are to generate qr codes for your wi-fi again this is a pc i don't have wi-fi so i can't show you that I'll just throw up a screenshot of it here. And also, again, if you're running a laptop, you have the option to show the battery percentage in the corner of your battery. Yet another thing I can't show you because this is a PC, it's not a laptop. And now another way that this kind of reminds me of Silverblue and also Chrome OS, this is something that uh, also Alan Pope posted on Telegram, is it has OS Tree. OS Tree, if you're not familiar, makes images of your system and updates the entire system as one image, similar to how Silverblue and Chrome OS do it. And in that way, your system can never be broken by updates. It'll update the whole system at once you restart and you're in the new system. There's not individual components to break. It's all image based. It's kind of like a, like a, a Git for your operating system. And if something were to go wrong, it can just roll back to a previous version. I don't know if that part has been implemented because when I do boot up, I only get one option to load the OS. It's not showing a previous version, even though I did get an update, but I assume that's something that is coming. And now some of you are probably curious about, does it play games? Well, it does. So I've installed Steam. Yes, it is a flat pack. And you're probably wondering how well Steam could play under a flat pack. Now I have a, an AMD, uh, Radeon 580. It's not the greatest graphics card, but I mean, and this also isn't the most demanding game. It's just Bioshock Infinite. 
I'll just load it up a little bit here and you can just see how it performs. Now, again, keep in mind, this is flat pack of Steam running an actual Steam game, but everything is out of the box, GNOME OS. I didn't install any drivers, I didn't do anything. Now, this is also an advantage of using AMD. If you're using NVIDIA, I don't know, I don't know what kind of performance you're gonna get, but for what it is, I mean, this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, no complaints here. I also have the settings set to ultra. So if you have it set to lower, it'll be even better. But I mean, this is just fantastic for what it is. So you have a system that works out of the box. The installation is pretty easy. I'll put a link in the description on where to get the ISO and also post a link to Jason Evangelo's video. He kind of went through his uh, install process. It's really simple. It's a couple of clicks. I can't show you because I'm running on bare metal, but go check out his video. You'll see how to install super easy. The only thing I will say is kind of a downside. I haven't figured out how to get it to work yet is I can't get extensions to work. Now, again, this is not meant to be its own OS. This is like a developer's thing. This is letting you try 3.38, but hey, it's it's running. Now, I tried installing dash to dock and dash to panel. Wouldn't work, but there are other extensions that come pre-installed. They do work. You can change these things here, add and remove them. So that's pretty neat that it does work. It just doesn't have the option to add them yet. Again, I tried to force them manually to install. I tried a few different versions. Neither of them work. When they do show up, I just get this little red do not enter thing or whatever. The settings page work, but the extension itself actually doesn't work. So hopefully that's in the works. If I go on the GNOME extensions website with Firefox, I install the plugin for GNOME extensions and it will install the extension, but then it still needs something installed in the system. And because there's no package manager, I guess I could build it from source code, maybe. I'm not sure, I didn't even check if that's a possibility, but currently even forcing it, there's no way for it to work. Maybe the extensions just need to be updated for 3.38. I'm not sure, but it works. It is fantastic. Uh, it's quick and it uses, uh, I don't know, about a gig of RAM on boot up. I didn't actually uh, check before firing up all this stuff. But yeah, if you want to check it out, go ahead and download the ISO and you can play around with it and see for yourself what 3.38 is all about. One other little thing that I'll mention as well is it only works in Wayland. It has the option on the login screen to load up as Xorg, but it just brings you back to the login screen. so. It doesn't really work, but it's fine. It's it's something to play with, fire it up in a virtual machine and play around with it, check it out. It's neat. It is noticeably smoother on my screen. I'm not sure if it's showing up as smooth in the uh, screen recording. I hope it is, but it's very, very nice. It's silky. It's just beautiful. And by the way, in case you do play with it and you want to do some experimenting and you know play with a few things, I don't know if there's no root password, but sudo works so you can do sudo and whatever command and it'll just do it it's hard to tell it kind of gives you an error here but you can see that the dollar sign changed to a hash which means that i'm now running as root and now i'm back as regular user so it works there's just no root password there's only so many things you can do with root anyways you can edit uh different configs and whatnot but go ahead play with it let me know what you think about the new version and let me know if you've managed to get it up and running in a virtual machine. And if you tinker with it, there's a lot of cool stuff I'm sure that we can do. As mentioned in Jason's video, if you're trying it in a virtual machine, it has to run under GNOME boxes and make sure it's version 3.38. But other than that, this is pretty nice. I'll see what else I can come up with with this OS. Maybe I'll figure out how to install a few things from source or something. I don't know, we'll see. I think it's kind of exciting to see the desktop stand on its own without an operating system underneath. I mean, yes, the Linux kernel is running underneath, but you know what I mean. There's no Debian, there's no Fedora, there's nothing running. It's just GNOME OS. 
I hope you enjoyed this little peek. If you'd like to support my channel, head on over to patreon.com slash dorian.slash and you can follow me over on Twitter at dorian.slash. Thanks for watching and until next time, bash on. Mm -hmm.